If the IT department in Mesa County had agreed to do the backup, I would have been more than happy, and that's as far as it would have gone. But when they denied that request, and I had no one else to turn to, with all the suspicious activities going on, people mm -hmm. coming into my office, the uh, April 6th municipal election results, the Secretary of State. But again, nothing fucking suspicious about this other than their assertion that the candidate somehow knew a half hour before she did or before she announced it. Have we seen any evidence of that other than the fact that they're saying so? Yeah, she released the passwords on the internet. That's why she got busted. Yeah. But, uh, and she brought in this other uh, person. Hold on one second. Let me bring that up. Okay. Uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So, here you go. Um, close. <clears throat> A Mesa County grand jury has indicted uh, County Clerk Tina Peters on 10 charges related to a security breach of the county's election system in 2021. The case still must be proven in court, but comes alongside separate criminal probes by state and federal authorities. The Republican clerk was a political newcomer when she was elected in 2018, but as Peters' legal troubles have grown... So, and by the way, in 2018, which, you know, again, that's when the Democrats took the House, but she manages to, you know... Because every election is, every every candidate, every Democrat was elected through a rigged election. Every Republican got there naturally. Every fucking time. But as Peter's legal troubles have grown, so has her national profile. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, resignations have failed recall ever. Tina Peter's department was mired in political strife. Soon after she took office, nearly two dozen employees left the department with some alleging vote counting errors, missed election deadlines, questionable spending, and a toxic work environment. In March 2020, workers discovered that a ballot drop box right outside the main entrance of the election office contained 574 uncounted ballots from the November 2019 election. That kicked off an attempted recall in the summer of 2020 that ultimately failed. The group backed the recall, which, uh, sorry, the group backing the recall, which included several former employees of the clerk's office, also filed a complaint with the Colorado Secretary of State alleging Peters violated election laws. So they didn't, she didn't even bother to count dropped off votes outside in the box outside the actual office in june as a recall campaigners waved signs uh, outside the clerk's office ballots from a drop box in the clerk's office parking lot were also found blowing in the wind jesus christ the uncounted ballots also prompted the office of secretary of state jenna griswold a democrat to appoint a special election observer to monitor the county's administration of the 2020 primary election Peters argued the recall effort and controversy over uncounted ballots were part of a campaign by political opponents to undermine her. Sounds like a Trumpy. In a May 2020 Facebook post, she said the exodus employees was, of employees was because workers were told, quote, that when I took office, I was going to fire them and they left before or shortly after I arrived. She also appointed, told by who? People who were glad she got elected? I don't know, whatever. She also pointed to improvements made by her office, like the addition of a drive-up ballot bo drop box for the primary. Fucking, they hate fucking ballot drop-off boxes and f until they love them. And hiring of staff to replace those who had left. False claims of election fraud. Tina Peters again garnered headlines in January 2021. As Congress prepared to certify the results of the 2020 election won by President Joe Biden, former President Donald Trump won Mesa County by 28 percentage points. As some of the members of Congress prepared to challenge the election results, Peters tweeted unfounded claims that ballots could be counted more than once and that software used in voting machines could be manipulated. Months later, it, okay, so he bought those votes is what you're saying. I'm just uh, trying to clarify, but what? so what Tina Peters is saying is that Trump paid her and the uh, other pro-Trump workers in her office to guarantee him a higher margin in that state what? because he maxed it out. Okay, months later... At the beginning of August 2021, a far-right website published images that contained confidential passwords and other information from a Dominion voting machine. That information was later determined to have come from Mesa County. Um, there it is. Uh, court documents filed by both Secretary of State and attorneys from Tina Peters documented some of the facts surrounding the password leak. Here's what we know. May 17, 2021, the county's deputy clerk, Belinda Knisley, uh, Knisley, Knisley, I'm going with Knisley. 
uh, asked the IT department to turn off security cameras in the election office until August 1st. On uh, May 20... Wait. The county's deputy clerk who works with her? is that, I'm, I'm going with uh, COVID welding. Okay, that's, that's Belinda. Till further notice. On May 23rd, Peters used her access badge to enter a secure area in the elections office. Security credentials for a man named Gerald Wood were also used to enter the area. In a September 2021 court filing, Peters said she authorized a consultant to make a copy of the vote counting equipment hard drive. On May 25th, employees of Dominion Voting Systems, the company that makes election equipment from nearly every Colorado county, and an employee of the Secretary of State's office conducted a trusted build software update on Mesa County's voting machines. Despite rules that only allow people working for the Secretary of State, Dominion, and the county election officials to be present, Emails show that Wood was listed on the attendee list as an administrative assistant. An employee of the Secretary of State's office also testified that before the trusted build update, Peters introduced a man she said was an employee of her office who would be in attendance and called him Gerald Wood. During the, um, during the software update, videos and photos were taken, including images of passwords. In a court filing, Peters acknowledged taking photos and video of the software update. Peters said she authorized the same consultant to make another copy of the hard drive after the trusted build update. In court documents, Peters referred to Wood as a, quote, expert consultant, said she uh, authorized uh, making copies of the hard drives in order to determine whether the trusted build process erased or destroyed election records. According to the court filings, the confidential passwords for the county's election equipment were openly displayed on a laptop belonging to an employee of the Secretary of State's office. So the question really, okay, so who is Gerald Wood? Who's got Wood? Um, according to the grand jury indictment of Tina Peters, Gerald Wood testified that he was never at the county clerk's office on May 23rd when records show his access badges were used. Or on May 25th, the day of the trusted bill, when Peters introduced a man by that name to a state employee. So either he really was there and he's full of shit, or she used his credentials to get some other, like, raggedy Trump fan in there to help her. On May 25th, 2021, the Mesa County trusted bill was set to begin in the morning. DBS employee David Stahl was present and testified that Tina Peters introduced him to a man she referred to as Gerald Wood, who she said was an administrative assistant who was in training and would be involved in the elections process. Danny Casayas, an SOS employee and public servant who was uh, Secretary of State, who was the only uh, SOS employee to participate in the Ma uh, Mesa County Trusted Build on May 25th slash 26th, also testified that Tina Peters introduced him to a person she called Gerald Wood. Tina Peters described Gerald Wood as being an employee of the Motor Vehicle Division who was transferring over to elections. The grand jury was present with uh, presented with evidence that corroborated Mr. Wood's sworn testimony regarding his whereabouts on May 23rd and 25th, according to the indictment. Wood told the grand jury that Peters called him to do contract work with Dominion Voting Machines that the county's T IT department could not perform. He obtained a county access badge on May 19th, but returned the badge on the same day and was never hired by Mesa County in any capacity and never did, quote, any work for Mesa County, the indictment says. Peters and Belinda Knisley, her deputy clerk, have been charged with criminal impersonation for using Wood's identity. That is the part that I had not seen until now. I mean, I knew she she had somebody there taking pictures and doing shit. So she introduced Belinda as, as Gerald Wood. Within days of the password leak, the Secretary of State in Mesa County uh, District Attorney launched separate criminal investigations. As investigators from the Secretary of State's office arrived to serve a search warrant for uh, the county clerk and recorder's office, Tina Peters was taking a private plane to a cyber symposium in South Dakota, sponsored by Mike Lindell. We watched that. I did that with you guys. It was used as website, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Peters, along with Sharona Bishop. Yeah, we saw her there as well. A Grand Junction resident and a former campaign manager for Republican uh, U.S. Rep. Lauren Boebert were featured speakers at the event. At the conference, Peters said she was being, quote, persecuted and accused both Griswold and Governor Jared Polis, both Democrats, of trying to, quote, take over my office and control the way we vote. Uh, let's see, uh, disappears from the public, troubles for her deputy. Shortly after investigating, investigation began, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold's office ordered Mesa County to buy new voting equipment because of the password breach. In mid-August, the Secretary of State also barred Tina Peters from overseeing the upcoming election in November 2021. 
Peters, meanwhile, had not been seen publicly since the Secretary of State's investigation began. Um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Peters remained out of public eye for nearly a month, claiming she feared for her life, right, because Mike was running around the country. Jesus Christ. Amid the investigations, nearly 250 of Peters supporters held a rally where they continued to espouse false claims of election fraud in 2020. Her supporters also flooded meetings of the Mesa County Commission, prompting commissioners to urge Peters to, quote, come home. FBI gets involved. Let's see. Um, October, a judge agreed that Peters could be uh, should be barred from overseeing the election because of investigations. Former Secretary of State Williams and Mesa County Treasurer Sheila Reiner, both Republicans, were appointed to oversee the election. Uh, Peters appealed the decision, which declined to hear her case. In mid-November, the FBI searched the homes of Tina Peters, Sharona Bishop, and other associated with the criminal investigation. Peters and her supporters claimed authorities used excessive force during the search. I'm sure we'll see footage. Ms. Peters was allowed to move around her home and fix herself breakfast while agents gathered items before departing. I'm, I don't think they're going to show that, Mesa County DA Dan Rubenstein and Attorney General Phil Weiser said in a statement to refute her allegations. Okay, enter a grand jury. Who the fuck was... Peters, who dressed up as Gerald Wood? Uh, according to a search warrant, after being alerted to the possibility that Peters was filming the hearing on her iPad, which is against courtroom rules, the judge presiding over the case confronted Peters, who said she was not recording. Later, a deputy district attorney and paralegal said they saw Peters' iPad open in the courtroom with the camera application open. That prompted a judge to issue a search warrant, and authorities confronted Peters at Main Street Bagels in Grand Junction to seize her iPad. This is where she refused to give over her iPad when they had a, uh, and then they arrested her. The arrest warrant for uh, Clerk Peters' iPads to be seized for evidence in a felony, felony prosecution for attempted influence a public servant. Uh, update, uh, Mesa County Clerk P Tina Peters appeared to attempt to kick a law enforcement officer while struggling with police during arrest. This is video from a witness. Videos of her confrontation show Peters trying to kick an officer who was handcuffing her. She was briefly detained, was charged the next day with a misdemeanor obstruction of police officer and obstruction of government operations. She was uh, turned herself in and posted 500 bail. That's her mugshot with uh, uh, Belinda Knisley. They got a contempt of court. Following Monday, it appears, uh, appeared on an online show hosted by Steve Bannon. Um, the, a judge issued a contempt of court citation, ordered Peters to appear at a hearing at the end of March. She was charged with six counts, including attempting to influence a public servant, like basically using footage in the, uh, you know, in the thing saying, I'm filming you. You better watch what you say. Violation of duty, failing to comply with Secretary of State because she was told not to film it and all that kind of stuff. Peters and Knizzly turned themselves in, uh, calls to drop out of the race, primary ballot for Secretary of uh, on Okay, da -da -da, she's running. Peters leads GOP opponents to f in fundraising visits Mar-a-Lago. Judge bars Peters to tour of her deputies from involvement in the election 2022. Loses GOP Secretary of State primary contest. Clearly rigged. Clearly because what? It, they rigged it against her. Uh, Anderson will face Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold in November. Okay, warrant issued for arrest. Recount requested. After Tina Peters' appearance at the Constitutional Sheriff and Law Enforcement Association Conference in Vegas, a Mesa County judge issued a warrant for arrest on July 14th and revoked her $25,000 bond. Peters' attorney filed documents taking responsibility for failing to let the court know Peters would be outside the state. She was supposed to stay in state. Meanwhile, Peters, who lost her Secretary of State primary by 14 percentage points, and Republican U.S. candidate uh, state rep Ron Hanks, who lost by nine points, both asked Secretary of State Jenna Griswold for recounts. The statewide recounts will cost an estimated 236000 She raised $519,000 after her primary defeat. Shows she's still a loser after the recount. So she got a full recount. There you go. 